Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are here in the platform bedroom uh, or the teen uh, room renovation and I have made a big mistake. Okay, so let me try to address a couple of the most common comments then I'll get to my big mistake. This is where the stairs are gonna be and there's actually only gonna be one stair right here. And Jerry Ellison says, hinge the stairs so you don't have wasted space under the frame. Uh, and so the idea that many people had was to uh, somehow hinge the stair so it opens up. The problem with that is that it's only going to be half the height of this area. And so there's going to have to be a solid panel on the back of that. And it would be very awkward to have hinges on the edge or have some other way to lift this whole uh, front piece up. And so uh, instead of having some kind of hinged uh, area here on the stairs that would be kind of visible, uh, I'm going to stick with the trap door idea and have uh, some type of trap door right there in the middle. So in regards to the electrical, AJ Lewis says, why not just raise the outlets? And so many people made this comment to, uh, I think the cynic also said the same thing, uh, just take the outlet, raise it up above the bed area. The problem with that is that the wires that run through the wall here from uh, like this outlet, they run through the wall probably over to here and it's tight in there. And so it's really hard to run uh, new wires through all the joists without tearing a bunch of drywall and stuff, which I wanted to avoid. So I could move the outlets up, but I'm gonna try to do some fancy work with the electrical using the bed frame to run some wires underneath and moving these outlets around so that I can get them up above the bed here and uh, have electrical available for the kids while they're in bed. So what, what, what was the thing I, I should have listened to you so the thing that you should have listened to me about was putting the flooring down before you built this and that this should not be um, affixed to the floor or the walls in any way. I probably should Respectfully listened. speaking. <laughs> yeah, I should have listened. So I should have listened to my wife. That was the, the, big, uh, the big mistake was, uh, or the big change that I'm going to make was I'm, I'm going to do the vinyl floor underneath this. Uh, Camper14 had also made this comment. He said, I would have put the vinyl flooring down before the frame uh, for moisture reasons. And what my original idea was, is I wanted this thing mounted to the floor. I wanted it mounted to the walls. I wanted this to be built in as part of the room. Uh, and, and I was gonna anchor it to the concrete and I didn't wanna have vinyl flooring underneath it where it would, could move around or anything like that. I wanted this thing to be solid. But after getting this in here and feeling how solid it is just sitting here, I decided oh, I don't need to anchor to the floor. I don't really need to anchor to the walls or I could put maybe a screw or two in the walls. Uh, and so now I'm thinking about building these, uh, these trap doors and these storage areas and stuff. And I'm like, man, I wish I had some vinyl flooring in there. And I was thinking about putting the vinyl flooring in the storage areas and cutting it all around the two by fours. And then I just have come to the realization I should have listened to my wife <laughs> and I should have just put the vinyl flooring in uh, right off the bat. And so that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to take the bed apart and it comes apart in sections. It's super easy. I can unscrew it, take it apart. I'm also going to just paint this whole room. I'm going to do all the final painting right now on the walls. I'm going to put the bed back in there and then I'm going to build out all the plywood parts of it and the doors and the desk and all that stuff. So uh, today we're going to uh, get this bed moved, we're going to get everything repainted, and we're going to get the flooring put in. First coat is on 
and it definitely needs a second coat. So this is supposed to be one coat paint, but I have found it always looks nicer to do two coats. So you can see the, the trim along the trim there. That's the, the uh, parts that need the, the second coat the most. But I'm gonna do a second coat on all of it. The doors and this trim is gonna get painted a different color. And so we'll do that uh, down the road. One of the things that I have found to be the most useful uh, when painting is having good light. And this is a, uh, I've showed us a light very similar to this before, but this is a Stanley brand. And this replaces my old junky uh, work lights. And man, is this thing nice. It folds up and um, all of this retracts and the legs fold up and it's got a handle on it right here and you can carry it. It's about, you know, three feet long when it's all folded up and you can throw that in the back of a truck or, you know, as a work light, it's just awesome. And then you've got the, it's all LED. So um, it just runs so much, so much better. I'll point it away from us so we don't blind ourselves. But man, is this thing nice. And you can point them uh, straight forward. You can point them down. I use it as like a patio light a lot of times or just as a work light. So, but that good white light in here, you know, that shows all the, all the mistakes in the paint that need to be corrected and some dust that needs to be cleaned up. So let's get back to work. Another handy little uh, gadget that I picked up years ago is this little uh, trim uh, container, paint container. It's got a, a magnet on the uh, front half of it here where the brush sticks to it, holds your brush. And it's designed with a, the handle right here so that your hand fits in it so it's comfortable to hold. It's got a nice edge on it so you can clean up your, your brush as you're painting. So. Makes, it makes trim a lot nicer because you can carry this around up and down, you know, carry it up a ladder and uh, not have to keep coming up and down for paint. All right, painting is completed. I think it turned out, uh, turned out pretty good. For some old beat up walls, it uh, turned out pretty good. So now we're ready to get to the real project, which is uh, putting this vinyl flooring in. This is life proof vinyl floor. It's this stuff right here. This is a multi width plank. I, I really like this stuff. So it has a, a core, a PVC core to it. It has the underlayment built in, so you don't need a separate underlayment, it's all part of it. Um, and then it has a, a really thick wear layer on the top. So I'm not a huge fan of vinyl flooring, to be honest with you, in general. I just don't like the feel of it. But when you're dealing with a concrete slab and you, you might have moisture or anything like that, there's just nothing better than a floating vinyl floor, a good quality one. So, so it has this interlocking edge on it and that really, it, it goes all the way to the on, on the long edges and on the short edges, it locks together. And it really uh, snaps together and holds together. This stuff is very um, temperature uh, st stable, so it doesn't uh, you know, expand and contract. There's not a lot of uh, movement in it at all. And uh, man, whether it's cold, hot, moist, dry, whatever, this stuff just holds together. So you don't get any of that splitting or separating that I've had on all of our other cheap uh, MDF type flooring. Uh, this stuff just really holds together well. This is the multi-width style, so it comes in each box with a few of these big wide planks, uh, some of the medium planks, and then some of the smaller planks. You can do these in all different kinds of patterns. You can do the, the wide plank and then a small and a medium that equal together. Uh, but what I usually do is just run uh, a wide plank all the way down and then a medium plank all the way down and then a thin, you know, a small plank all the way down. And so that's just how I do it. So if we had this coming together like this, we have a seam connection here. Our next plank, we wouldn't want it to line right up like that. That would be very bad. 
you want it to be like this. And so we're gonna stagger the length of them. So we're gonna start with a, a full plank. We're gonna make our way all the way down, snapping those together. And we're gonna cut off our, our extra here at the end. And then we're gonna go with the, the next one. We're gonna cut off kind of a random end, random length, so that the, uh, so the seams doesn't, don't line right up. So we'll have a shorter piece there and then we'll go continue on down to the end and we'll do the same thing. Just making sure that our seams never line up so that there's some kind of stagger. Now I'm not doing any special pattern or anything like that. We're just gonna put them together and just make sure that the seams, seams don't, uh, don't line up for us. Well, so far, I think the floor is turning out really nice. I really like this, this pattern. This is the, the Walton Oak uh, pattern from Life Proof. And I like this better than the, the one that we used downstairs. It was a little more gray. Uh, this one has some gray tones in it, but I like the different, the real dark and the real light uh, planks. And so it's kind of cool as you put things together, you know, you can pick out the lighter ones and the darker ones and kind of make your own pattern. Uh, but you can see, you know, we just made sure that the, the seams uh, never lined up with each other. And I think that works really good. It keeps, uh, keeps everything nice and tight. You just never want those seams to, to line straight up with a plank next to them. Uh, makes things uh, not lock together as well. But man, this stuff is solid and these seams will, will never come apart. I mean, they're, the, way you, the way that stuff locks together, you, you pound it in place. I just use that piece of scrap wood and, and just, uh, you know, tap on this seam right here. It snaps that these two planks right together. And then as you come in on a 45 with that, uh, the planks, uh, the long side of the plank, it, it locks in. And then when you tap on it uh, with the hammer, I just tapped on each piece, it just snaps that, that tiny little gap together. And this stuff is just nice and solid. So really like this floor. We did run out of uh, flooring, but I went to Home Depot 
yesterday and grabbed another box, but uh, I'll finish this up off camera, just these last little, little bit here, and then we'll get ready to put the platform bed back in place. I just love doing projects twice. And then we'll start working on some of the electrical work and then we'll get everything covered, uh, build in our trap doors and our, our access to the storage areas, build our desk, uh, and then do a bunch of final touches to everything. A uh, bunch of different things to do still. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the uh, another plan and build. Uh, today we kind of answered some, uh, some of the uh, recommendations that you guys had. So I'd love to hear more. What more recommendations do you have? I'll, I'll uh, uh, see if we can apply any of that stuff as we uh, complete this project. So thanks for all the, the feedback and the ideas. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Of course, if this is your first time here to the SSL Family Day channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and tag along. Uh, lots more of this project and many others coming up on the channel, so we'd love to have you here uh, for those. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.